Hey, it's great to be with you and get to come up here to Missouri and or to Missouri or however, you know, y'all like to say it, you know, the show me state. And, uh, but I flew into Kansas. You know how you have to go into that Kansas. Man, I can't wait till they get a new airport. How much longer before that thing's finished? Y'all know? We'll get after it. Today you're boating, you know. <laughs> tell them you want that thing fixed and done. But uh, anyhow, it's, I, I flew in uh, yesterday and chilled out, you know, last night. And uh, great to be with you this morning. Uh, I always like being with my own kind. Us senior adults. You see, y'all are looking at me right now. Probably you're thinking, I guess he's 59 maybe. Well, I'll be, I'll be 69 in September, September the 12th if you're sending gifts. Uh, or you can write a check. Uh, but uh, that's one thing we might do that our kids don't do anymore, do they? All they know is PayPal and take a draw out of their bank right out. They don't even know what they're spending on. And then we're going to die and give them all our money. Uh, and you know what they're going to do with it. They're going to spend every bit of it. And uh, I enjoyed the estate planning thing in there. I sat in the back with the preacher. and I was watching all that and observing all that. And I'm going, man, you know, I'm starting to think, what are they going to do for me? Dad, you should have planned better. Uh, where are you putting me? You should have planned better, Dad. You're, you know, no telling where they'll put me. I've taken care of my mama, Pauline Bernadine. She's 93, and she's an independent living, and it's nice and everything, saltwater pool, but she won't swim in it. She's 93. I said, Mama, go swimming. You know, you can swim because everybody there that swims is 90. You know, they're all swimming. They're your age. They're your people, and they're swimming. And, and she and other friends, they'll go sit and watch them swim and play volleyball with a with a beach ball. I said, you're looking at them in their swimsuits. So go get your swimsuit on. She said, I did it one time, but I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I said, well, why aren't you? It take, it's so hard to get it on. <laughs> I said, well, and then it's so hard to get it off. I said, well, what else do you have to do? I have a lot going on. I have a lot today. I'm gone. But love my little mama. Well, it's great to be with you. And, uh, you know, I was raised in Austin, Texas, uh, actually just east of Austin. Uh, well, in, in northeast Austin. My grandparents lived east of Austin in Maynard and, and uh, Elgin, out in the country, outside of Maynard and Elgin. I mean, near Kimbro, near New Sweden. I'm Swedish. I'm a Svenskapeka. I'm a Swedish boy. I'm not cussing. Uh, I'm a, uh, if you're a Swedish girl, you're a Svenskaflikja. But uh, my, my, my grandma wanted me to marry a Swede. I'm full blood Swede. My grandpa, Elof Swanberg, came from Sweden when he was 14 on the Lusitania. In 1912, he was 14 years old. He was an orphan, he and his sister. And uh, they settled east of Austin in a little community of Swedes called New Sweden. Swedes are very creative people. Uh, they called it New Sweden. And that's... And so, and then my other three grandparents were born there right after uh, their parents got there. So I'm full blood Swede. So when I married my wife, Lori, uh, 43 years ago, uh, my grandma, she said, I said, no, she's a Heinz 57. Uh, and my grandma said, well, she's cute, which, you know, you got to hand it to her. She was trying to be Christian. Uh, but deep down in her heart, she wanted me to marry a Swede. You know, back then in, in Texas, in that area, you'd have a Swedish community, German community, Czech community, them Czechs. Anybody here Czech, got a little Czech in you? Them Czechoslovakians, you got some, honey? You love that poppy seed kolaches. Oh, and the polka music. And uh, those are good people. I pastored down there in central Texas with a bunch of Czechs. And I remember one time we went to a restaurant and we were about to go in the door, and I said, wait, we can't eat here. He said, why can't we eat here? I said, it says no checks accepted. Uh, but that's a horrible joke. That's terrible. But that's where my people, that's where I'm from down in that area, man. And, you know, I want us to sort of think back to some of those days, you know. Uh, I want you to think back to those days when we were kids, and those were fun times going out to your grandma and grandpa's house, spend the night with grandma and grandpa, mamma, papa, mimi, pops, poops, pops, big mama, ga ga, gee gee. Uh, these names nowadays are, are you know, crazy. Uh, we're, I'm papa, my wife's BB. 
And I wanted to be Big Swan. Uh, but my daughter-in-law said, no, that's what everybody else calls you. I want, I want the kids to be able to call you something different. I went, you know, what do you say? All right. You try to be Christian. Yeah, what do you all want to call me? We're going to call you Papa. I went, Papa. And then my wife, she was going to be Honey Love because I always call her my Honey Love. And she was going to be Honey Love or Honey. But they said, no, that's what, that's what, you know, Dennis calls you. We want you to have your own name with the grandkids. So you're going to be BB. She went, BB. You know, we're trying to be Christian. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know how your kids marry other families, and we all know they're different. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Uh, we're normal, and they are crazy. But uh, so we, we acquiesce. Isn't that something? We, act, we acquiesce. Okay, she's BB and I'm Papa. And when we're together, I go, honey, just, you know, go to go with it and be BB. Well, you know, I wanted to be honey, but I'll call you honey. It's not the same. It's not the same. I went, I'm sorry, babe. Well, then we, but now we got these two grandkids and I think we've got a picture of them. Uh, oh, ooh, look at there. Wait, I need to work on that right there. <laughs> Getting a little, I need a chia plant. Oh, there's Andrew James. That Now, Andrew James Floyd. My daddy's name was Floyd, Floyd Leon. And they named him Andrew James Floyd. And I, I love my daddy Floyd. Uh, he's my hero, but I would not do that to a child. You know, I mean, Floyd. In 1927, Floyd was like a number one name to name a child, but that was the only year. Never has happened since. You know, they tried it out and just, boo. But we love little Andrew James Floyd. We call him AJ. And then, then we have another one, uh, Maxine. And we call her Moody Max. That was last week. Uh, we take her to Chick-fil-A and said, here's your chicken. And boy, she's moody and just right off the bat, just, you know, gets, I mean, just, you know, that, that natural sin from birth, we're born into sin. And it's just that, look at her. She's two years old and she just got an attitude, but, but she calls me Papa. Oh, and when they call you Papa, we love them. Oh, Papa, Papa, Papa. And then B.B., uh, I was speaking the other day at a church, and I had a lady come up to me. She said, I was a missionary in Africa, and in Swahili, BB means big mama. I said, well, I ain't telling my wife that. <laughs> uh, sh let's show the picture of my wife, and uh, I, I think it's, there's me and Andrew. Yeah, there's, and, and Maxine is happy there. She likes the peach uh, shake ice cream. That's my little wife, Laurie, right now. She's a brunette right now. Uh, about every three weeks, God does a miracle on her hair. And I pay for the miracle. Can I get a witness for that? Uh, and look, old Jeff's back there. He just smiling. He ain't saying a word. He ain't saying a word. His wife back there, you're natural. I can tell you're natural. Uh, just great. And, uh, but some of you ladies here, you know, you, you've, we've finally gone natural. We just, I'm, you know, before COVID, I used to dye my hair to try to make people think I'm 57 or something. During the COVID, I just let it go white, bright, spiked, and hope it stays thick. You know, you know, you start losing it. Like when I was looking up there in the back of my head, you know, getting a little thin in that area. You just sort of move it into the same area. <laughs> Jeff, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you, Pastor? Okay. Uh, but he can grow a beard. Now, I know how some of y'all are. I know he has a beard, but I let it go because, you know, he's got to grow it somewhere. <laughs> and uh, so anyhow, that's, and let's see, is there another picture of Laurie? I don't know if there, that's just me. Oh, yeah, and Andrew James. Oh, there's my family. Uh, there's, on the far left, there's Brittany. Uh, and thank God she married Dusty right there next to her, Dustin. There's a book back there called No More Secrets. It has stories of my boys, and they've had their bumps in the road. And, and, uh, but anyhow, Dusty, oh, married Brittany, and she's a dog trainer and a dog groomer. And Dustin has learned to fetch. Uh, he's uh, learned to sit and uh, speak when, oh, 
on hand signals and verbal. And we just, oh, we love Brittany. And she gave us Andrew and, and Maxine. And there's my little wife, Laura, and our dog, Taka. He's a chocolate teacup poodle. He's gonna be 15 years old, November the 7th. He and Billy Graham. Billy Graham, they have the same birthday. And he's gonna be 15. He can't see, he can't hear, can't walk, but he can still eat and do his stuff. So, and he sleeps between us. He sleeps right between us for 15 years. I know this isn't biblical. Jeff, don't be judging me by this, but I, if, when I get to heaven, if for some reason God can let me come back as a dog, I wanna be a chocolate teacup poodle so I can sleep right next to my wife. You know, I mean right on her hip. You know, I'm over there to the side with a CPAP machine on. Just, shh, 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 shh. I mean, that's the closest I get to her. I mean, but the dog, he's right on her. Yep, Dennis. I told Dennis earlier, I said, Dennis, we're both Dennis. I said, Dennis spelled backwards is send. But it's past tense. But anyhow. Uh, and then there's me and Laurie and, and then uh, Chad, my oldest son, and, uh, and Cotton, Cotton's, a, he's not really a teacup, but you know, he's, he's younger and he can move and run and play and jump and talk or just, you know, my wife ain't here right now. So, you know, you know, what do you do with that dog? I mean, I love him, I'm everything, you know, I mean, we're attached to him, but you know, when I was growing up on the farm, when the time came, we took old Brownie behind the barn, we dug a big hole, we put him in front, and we got to, got to 22, and boom, and there he fell into the hole, and then we covered him up, and then we said, Brownie's gone to be with Jesus. Uh, but you just can, don't do that with these dogs nowadays. You know? yeah, boy, Heidi, I shouldn't have brought that up during the COVID. Uh, but, you know, we love that little dog. But anyhow, that's my family, so... Oh, and I want you to see my mom, Pauline Bernadine, while, while we got these pictures. Isn't, there she is. And I got her Alfred Dunner outfit. She loves Alfred Dunner. I love Alfred Dunner. And if you don't know what Alfred Dunner is, I want to tell you, get you some Alfred Dunner. Uh, yeah, there's another picture. There, look at her. And that's her 90th birthday. She's 93 now, but doesn't she look good? And my dad died, as I said, in 2012. If you happen to be anywhere near 90 and you're single, fellas. I mean, I told my mama, I said, listen, I, I pay for her independent living. And I said, if you find a guy anywhere near 90 that's willing to marry you and pay for the room, I'll do the wedding for free. Because that is stewardship, people. That is stewardship. We need to remember that. Uh, she said, I'm not messing with another man. I went, well, you can get two rooms and y'all can just watch TV in the middle together. And, uh, but she hadn't done that, but I love her. And you know, Alfred Dunner, for some, some of you might be, not be familiar, Alfred Dunner, he's got the blouse, got the little jacket, and the britches are elastic. They just, woo, woo. They just, woo, woo. They work with you. Just, woo, woo. And uh, just, <laughs> so I'm starting to win some of y'all over right now. Uh, it, I mean, it just feels better and good. My mom, during the COVID, we would talk all the time. Of course, I'm up in the Fort Worth area the last few years, and, and she's down in Austin, so we're three hours apart. But, you know, we call, Mom, how you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay. Well, Mom, if anything I can do, you know, they've locked, we're locked down. We've been locked down. I said, I know, Mom. They bring our meals. I know, Mom. We can't do anything. I said, I know. Well, what are you doing? I'm watching uh, Fox News, and I'm concerned about North Korea. This was just one episode. I said, Mama, you don't need to worry about North Korea. I said, God's handling North Korea. You know, you're, you're 90, you know, at the time, 91 or whatever, you don't need to worry about North Korea. God has some people that's handling North Korea. What do you think about the little rocket man? I said, Mama, I don't, I don't want you to worry about the little rocket man. I'm praying that Kim Jong-un will come to know Jesus. My mama taught third grade Sunday school 52 years. 
I'm praying that Kim Jong-un will come to know Jesus like Paul did on the Damascus Road. I said, well, he may see a bright light. Uh, but I don't know if he'll have time to make a decision. I'll let Jeff preach on that. How long is the twinkling of an eye? But anyhow, I love my mom. And then that she did this one. She called me during the COVID and I said, Mom, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I said, well, great. What can I do for you, Mama? Anything I can do for you? Well, I bought something off the QVC and I don't know if they'll take it back. I said, they'll take it back, Mom. I promise you, they'll take whatever it is. Nowadays, they take it back. Just send it back. Well, I don't think they will. They'll take it back. I don't know if they will. Well, what did you buy? Spanx. I said, Spanx? Like, like the girdle? Like a girdle that you put around? Yeah, my tummy's so big, and I'm tired of it, and so I got the Spanx, and I put it around to pull in my tummy. I said, Mama, you're 92 years old. Who cares about your tummy? I care about my tummy. I said, well, please, Mama, don't do something like that. Good night. Could break a blood vessel or, or blood clot or something. You know, you're 92. I said, just send it back. She said, I, well, I, I, I can't, I don't think I can send it back. I said, well, why not? Well, first of all, the bottom rolled up <laughs> and the top rolled down and I couldn't get it off. I said, Mother, are you kidding me? No, I couldn't get it off. Well, how'd you get it off? I called Sheila at the front desk and she came up and helped me take it off. I said, well, just send it back. They'll take it back. I don't think they'll take it back. I said, well, why not? We had to use the scissors. <laughs> I love my mama. She, she gives me material all the time. Uh, and the thing is, you know, now I'm becoming like my daddy, Floyd Leon. Uh, my, mom, my wife, you know, sometimes, see, I even messed up there. I said, my mama, you know, how she's your mother figure sometimes. Look at Dennis. He's got his arms crossed. He's nervous. You know why he has that voted sticker on there? Because she told him to put it on there. Uh, you know, we, and so anyhow, my wife, I, I love my wife. I love her, I love her, love her, love her, you know, but she's just sort of in charge, you know, sort of can be sort of bossy. And uh, look, see, there's, look, don't, it, don't, he just gave her the elbow, but it ain't stopping her not. Uh, she knows she's got the power and she's in charge. You got your little I voted sticker on too, so don't be giving Dennis a hard time. But my little wife, she just sort of, you know, can be sort of bossy and take charge. And all of a sudden she'll say to me, honey, you're acting Floydish. Like my dad, I love my dad. I love Floyd Leon. My dad was a sharecropper, uh, you know, raised as a sharecropper. My dad's a working man. My dad ran printing presses for 45 years, wore gray dicky pants, gray dicky shirt. We're working people. We weren't white collar. We weren't blue collar. We we're more ring around the collar. <laughs> and and uh, I said, well, my dad's a work. My dad's a good man. And my dad was a good churchman and everything. I know your daddy was. I know your dad. I love your daddy. But please, don't be floydish. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, I just don't be floydish. Well, then, you know, I want to say, well, don't be like your mother, Kathy. What did you mean by that? You know, I'm, you know, I'm not supposed to get upset, but she can. What did you mean by that? Well, you know, her mother uh, took me 15 years to win her over because I opened my mouth up all the time. You know, I just couldn't be quiet, but... Uh, then she loved me the last years of her life and stuff. But my wife, we, we had our tough time during COVID. I don't know about y'all. How'd y'all do? You know, we were together. I'm traveling all the time. I'm on the road all the time. I'm like a trucker. You know, I'm do a hundred events, 120 events. I'd be going all of a sudden the COVID 85 cancellations. I'm there at home with me and my wife, just me and her just sitting there. You know, what do you do? I mean, I'm, I'm in a recliner. I'm not bothering anybody. And she's a worker, you know, she can work, work, and she can clean and have little projects and give me a list. Give me, don't, just look straight ahead, Dennis. Don't look to the right. Just look straight ahead. But she gives me a list. I hate lists. I 
hate lists, but oh, I get them. You know, have I ever written her a list? No way. If I ever wrote her a list, I could be with Jesus right now. <laughs> you know, but she's a worker. Our house is immaculate. Our house is nice. It's, if I die today, if I die this afternoon, we are ready for company tonight. You know, I mean, they could come over and go, oh my gosh. Did she know he was dying, you know? But I, I love her, but anyhow, during the COVID, you know, I'm sitting there in the recliner, I'm just chilling out, taking it easy, and she'll come over, and she's such a worker, and she'll say, you know, you, have, you had tense times during the COVID sometime. And she said, my father, my father fixed everything. Her daddy was in World War II. He was in the Navy. Uh, he just passed away a few years ago at 95. I mean, uh, he's a hero, a good man, you know, Philippines, Australia, Japan, you know, love your daddy. But, you know, she just come, I don't know what prompted it. I guess me just sitting in the recliner all day. I wasn't bothering anybody. I'm watching, I'm watching gun smoke, gun smoke, gun smoke, <laughs> Andy Griffith, Andy Griffith, Andy Griffith. And we know that channel is for us old people because there's Pat Boone standing there going, hey, have you thought about a walk-in bathtub? You know. <laughs> I'm not going to ask y'all how many have a walk-in bathtub, but haven't you thought about it? You know, I tell these young people, you know, just us older people, we, we would enjoy a tub, but it's harder for us to get in the tub, good old hot water, because we're afraid of slipping and, whoop, you know, break a hip, whoop, whoop. You know, and I mean, I've thought about, you know, pasting down them flowers that are like sandpaper, you know, to give you traction. But it just don't feel right when you sit down and you scoot down, you know, just the pedal to the metal. You know what I mean? Uh, and then there's, Laurie will say, well, you got to be careful, you know, so she'll put down that plastic kind of thing with four million suction cups underneath. And that don't feel right sitting on that thing either. You know, I mean, I like the slip and slide. And, uh. I tell young people that they're looking at me like, you can't y'all get down? No, we're, I've had both knees replaced. I've had back surgery. I've had rotator cuff surgery. We can't take a chance to fall. We like, but we'd like a tub. And then when I finish with that plastic thing, Laurie's the type, I want it to everything be clean, so you need to pull it up. I don't want it to de develop mold. So you had to grab it and, you know, pull it. Them suction thing. Then she has a place to put it in the shower for it to drain and dry. I mean, good night. Our house is just. You know. I mean, if she dies, I mean, if she, go, I mean, I need. I'll go first, but if she goes before me, I mean, I'm being. I'll be tempted to say, "Free at last, free at last." Thank God, I'm free at last. But look, look at all these men. They're smiling, but they ain't laughing real hard. Because they're going, oh my gosh, look at all the men folding their hands. Look at his arms. He, his body language is saying, I'm scared to death. I'm scared to death. So, said, man, I love this speaker, but I can't say amen. If I say amen, it's, my life could be over. Uh, <laughs> there's another one back there. Look at you, buddy. <laughs> He's going, I ain't saying a word. Uh, but, you know, we, we get along. You know, we get tickled. We laugh. During the COVID, you know, I... And I'm liable to share some of this tonight. How many of y'all are coming back tonight? I need to know that. Oh, several of you. I need to make sure to give you some new material tonight and stuff. I got plenty, too much material. But, but you know, but Laurie and I, when we go to bed at night, we get tickled, you know, sometime. I mean, going to bed during the COVID. Because, you know, like we have a split king bed, split king, you know, hey, listen, enjoy some of your money. You know, you know buy you a split king bed. You know, let your kids get shook up about it. What'd y'all do? Buy a new bed? Well, they don't, they, you know, if they check out, buy a new mattress, how much those things can cost. And if you get one where the legs go up, and the back, they're going, what did you spend on that? You know, there went another chunk of their inheritance is what happened. You know, that's, I'm sitting in the back listening to this <laughs> estate planning and everything. I'm going, man, you know, Get you that bed now, you know, because, you know, they won't use it. The grandkids will play on it, but uh, give it to the grandkids. But so anyhow, we'll be in bed, and we got that split king. It, I got my mattress box springs. She has her mattress box springs. They're just split, and that's helpful because when I toss and turn, I don't wake her up. Be thoughtful. 
Jeff, be, be thoughtful of your sugar, babe. I've got restless leg. Some of y'all have restless leg. I take a pill for it. I got, I got my little pill box with me all the time. You know, you get older, you have your pill box. You never think you would have a pill box, you know, 30 years ago, but now we all got one, don't we? Some of y'all have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and, but that's too big to carry in your pocket. But I just have my little round thing. I tell young people all the time, I don't drink, I just do drugs. Uh, I said, that's what senior adults do. We, we're all on drugs and you know it. Don't act so holy. So I take a restless leg pill. Usually I take mine around five or six to help, you know, and see, even then, I still, you know, it happens, you know, and I'll be in the, you know, and, and it happens. I don't know what's happening. And then Laurie, who's very quiet, she's just a quiet, quiet person, but boy, when it's just us, you know, just like y'all, I mean, she goes, your knee is jerking! I'm just, well, I got my CPAP machine on, I go, <laughs> I don't even know who I am. I don't even know. I don't even know where I am. And she's going, your knee is jerking. Ha, ha. And sometimes my mask leaks. You know, if you have a CPAP machine, you know, sometimes. Shh, 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 shh. Some of you, some of you ladies, if your husband doesn't have one, or, or your husband's passed away, and you're thinking about remarrying or you've noticed someone you're interested, you need to find out if they have a CPAP machine because, I mean, you know, do you, I mean, do you want to sleep at night? You know what I mean? You know, and if it's, shh, 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 and well, Laurie, she's bold, goes, you're leaking. Well, I was a bedwetter till I was in the sixth grade and uh, I thought it had an accident and, and she said, your mask your mask. I'm like, oh, shh, shh. So I pull it on tighter, you know, to try to keep, and you know, some of y'all right now, there's some of you, I can tell, you know, I was a pastor 22 years, and I've been out of the pastor for 27 years, but I still, I can still read audiences pretty good, and there's some of you here that you don't want anybody to know that you wear a CPAP machine. You just don't want anybody to know. You need to know this. When you come to church on Sunday morning, we see the lines in your face. <laughs> so, <laughs> just let it go, let it go. But uh, anyhow, my little wife and I, you know, you gotta, you gotta learn to laugh about that, you know, and, uh, and enjoy life. I tell you what, I wanna, I wanna bring this little message to you today. Don't let anybody rob you of your joy, you know? And don't let any of your kids rob you of your joy. Wow, that's easier said than done, isn't it? I tell grandkids, uh, I said, you need to know that your grandma and grandpa, we think about you when we're drinking coffee in the morning. We think about our grandkids. We think about them when we go to bed at night. We, we enjoy thinking about our grandkids. We don't always enjoy thinking about our own kids because some of them are pitiful. Uh, see, y'all would never say that, but you know, some are, they're just on a journey and they hadn't got there yet. And you know what we have to know as seniors? They may not get there till they're 71. They may not get there till they're 80. They may not get there till they're 67. And that's fine, that's the Holy Spirit's business. So we enjoy thinking of our grandkids. That's why I love my grandkids so much. I tell people, I love my grandkids more than my two boys. I was down at Hyde Park Baptist Church a year ago, and I was preaching this in Austin, Texas. I, I shared that. Had a little lady come up to me after said, Brother Dennis, you love them both, but you love them differently. You love them both, but you love them differently. I said, no, ma'am, I love them more. I do. I love my grandkids more. I'll just have to work it out with the Bible, but I love them. I love them. And they're just so, right now they're so innocent. They're just, they're just so precious, you know. I took, uh, this summer, we put them in summer school, uh, summer preschool. And now my son, you know, he teaches history to juveniles that are locked up uh, behind bars, and they're, they're rough. 
they're rough, rough. And he doesn't make much money. And my daughter-in-law, she's a dog groomer, so she doesn't make that much money. They just, they just, but they're, they're like my mom and daddy, Floyd Leon and Pauline Burnley. They're churchmen. They love church. They, they're just involved and just good folks and just love the Lord and beautiful grandkids. And, of course, they sort of hoped that we would help take care of them during the summer break. I don't know about y'all. I mean, I mean, 69, September 12th, but, you know, one whole day, I'm pooped. I, I don't know if it's stressing me out, and they want them always together, you know. I said, let us have one at a time. No, we like them to be together. We like them to be together. Like, Where did you read that in a book somewhere? Just give us one at a time, you know. Well, we like them to be together. I, went, oh. I mean, it wears you out. Can I say it? Can you say amen? You know, you, you don't want them to hurt themselves. Or I've already had one where he had to have, you know, stitch. Kind of, I had to take him to the emergency room. I had to take him to, you know, put the butterfly, the thing. And, you know, I was the first one. I was hoping it would be her parents, not me. You know how you hope, you hope the other, the in-laws, you hope he does something bad over there. <laughs> don't act so holy. You, you want his first scar to be from her people, you know, but it was me, man. I don't even know what he fell on. We just, there he was, and, just, ah! and I went, dude, weren't you watching him? And you know, another thing, while I'm on it, you know how they do, hey, what did you feed him today? What did you feed them? You know, well, you know, are you going to tell him you gave him weenies? Uh, Hey, we gave them, you know, gluten-free this and gluten we did this, you know, they have, well, we have a list. I know you have the list right there. We put it right there. You know, oh, yeah, we fed them that. Uh, we boo-booed the other day. We took them to a movie, and uh, we got them the kids sampler, which is popcorn and, uh, and M&Ms and Skittles and, and a drink. And I took a picture of them there. And then they, well, they texted us quick and with an article about how kids are not supposed to eat popcorn because they can choke on it and all this kind of stuff, which, you know, I understand. Well, it was too late. They had woofed down every piece of popcorn. <laughs> I mean, it was gone. And by, <laughs> you know what you do? You don't tell them. You just don't tell them. You know, <laughs> later on they go, did they eat all that popcorn? Oh, man, it was gone. I mean, that was just gone, and uh, most of it on the floor. And I didn't, wasn't going to tell them they were eating it off the floor. But, I, you know, I've had both knees replaced. My wife, but we're going, stop it, stop it. You can't reach them in time. They're going, well, but that's how they build up immunities, you know. And that's why they'll probably never have COVID because uh, they eat off the carpet <laughs> at a theater. But anyhow. But they get, don't they give you the instructions? And we need them to be in bed by 7.30. Okay, AJ can be 8.15. We want them in bed at that time. I went, okie dokie. <laughs> well, you know, about 9.15, I'm looking at my wife. We better put them to bed. You know, they come, they're texting. Are they sleeping? Oh, they are in, uh, they are in a happy time right now. They're, they're dreaming. I didn't say with their eyes open, but they're... You know, but we we love those kids, and uh, aren't they a delight? But they do wear you out. So you know what we did for uh, we paid for their summer school. We paid for their summer to go to this place every day during the week. We paid for it. And can I tell you something? Can I give a testimony? It's the best investment we have ever made. <laughs> oh. I drop them off at 8.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, pick them up at 4.30. Hallelujah. Uh, so I just want to encourage you. You know, I ain't going to give my kids any money. I'm going to give my grandkids all the money. I'm, I'm working with my attorney right now. I'm going to hop over the kids and, and bless the grandkids so that when I die, and Laurie and we both are dead, and we're looking over the balcony of heaven. We see both of our boys going, man. And we're going. <laughs> Happy day. And our grandkids be going, Papa, baby. 
I love my grandparents. I want you to think a little bit, take you back here the next few minutes to your grandparents uh, before we close. Man, I had some good grandparents. I don't know, how many here knew your grandparents? Not everybody has that blessing, but I knew my grandparents. I'd go spend the night with them on the farm. Uh, you can't beat sleeping in grandma and grandpa's bed. Something about mama, grandma and grandpa's bed. I called mine grandma and grandpa. And we'd sleep in their bed. Good old farmers. Uh, no air conditioning. They never had air conditioning. Never, ever. Uh, we'd sit on the porch in the 105 degrees in Texas, and Grandma would be there with that little uh, sundress on and go, that's a nice breeze we're having right now. I went, oh, my gosh. You know, they never knew air conditioning unless they went to the hospital. And they said, oh, bring a quilt, bring a quilt. You know, they quilted in those days. I told my wife, honey, have you ever thought about quilting? My, listen, my people, my mama, my sisters, they can crochet, embroidery, hook a rug, pinpoint, powerpoint, cross point. My wife just goes to the mall and buys a comforter. You know, that's, and uh, I can't even lay on it. I wanted to lay on it one time, take a nap. Oh, honey, you don't lay on it. You know, it's just for show. It's just for show. I said, why can't I lay on it? She said, you have body oils. You have body oils. I have body oils. When I was growing up, man, we had that bed uh, with the little sprigs, chenille, or chenille. And the uh, worst thing about that that could happen to you, if you didn't have your shirt on, you had little sprigs <laughs> pressed all over you <laughs> after your nap. <laughs> and she goes, well, you're not sleeping on, on my uh, you know, comfort her. I said, baby, I love you, and I love my wife. I pick on her all the time. She's heard me do all this. I love her. But I told her, I said, if you die before me, right after the cemetery, I'm going to go to the bedroom. I'm going to unfold that comforter. I'm going to lay on it, and I'm going to do a snow angel on it. Just... <laughs> and she's going to be looking over the balcony of heaven. Get off, get off now. But I'd be at Grandma and Grandpa's, and some of you may have this memory. Grandpa, he did watch, uh, he'd watch Gunsmoke, Have Gun Will Travel, and Wagon Train. He loved those three. And when Wagon Train was over, he would say, turn it off, let it cool down. <laughs> I said, Grandpa, that, it's electric. The TV's electric. It can go for hours. Let it rest. Let it cool down. My grandpa Johnson, all he ever wore was overhauls, overhauls, and that was it. Are you with me? That was it. <laughs> yeah, you know what he used to say? He said, I think elastic cuts off the circulation. <laughs> and he might be right. He lived to be 99. If you want to live a long time, get rid of the <laughs> elastic in your life. But, and and I remember on top of our TV, there was a, a, the, the, Grandma had crocheted a doily, a doily, a doily. And we had a black ceramic panther on top of that doily. Y'all remember those black ceramic panthers long, just looking at you. Had a light bulb in the tummy. Ma'am, you're having a flashback. We had a light bulb in the tummy. Came out green eyes just looking at you. And we had an antenna right behind a doily with aluminum foil to pick up that one other TV station every now and then if you turned it just right. Sometimes you had to hold it. My, as a, my grandpa said, go up there and hold it. I, and I'd just stand there and hold it. I couldn't see the TV. I said, well, when can I watch it? Half time. You know. But I'd have to hold it like I was grounding it or something, you know. And, uh, but then to go to bed, and they would let me sleep in their bed. Isn't that something like Grandma and Grandpa would do? And they'd go sleep in another room. Each room had a wire in the middle that came down from the ceiling with one bulb. One bulb. I remember saying, Grandpa, you know, we can put you a light fixture up there where you have several lights and it's a fixture. He said, I don't need no fixture. We, just, we have a bulb, you know, a tight wad. Uh, we, we didn't have running, uh, we, ha we had got water running 
uh, out there, you know, I was like 10, and they'd heat it up and, and pour it in the tub and just like two inches of water. And so my little sister would go first, then me, then my, uh, my, big, my big sister, then my mama, when my dad was at Fort Hood during Fort Hood playing Army for a couple of weeks, then be grandma, and then they would pour one more big kettle in there for grandpa, and we bathed in the same water. I mean, I turned out okay, didn't I? Uh, but, and grandpa used lava soap, lava. And you know, he didn't have a tooth in his head, and, he, and we were ready to go to bed. Well, he's last one, and grandma said, go in there, and she didn't have a tooth in her head. She said, go in there, and you kiss your grandpa. So I go in there, and you know, he got the lava on, and he, I remember, you know, looking at him, and you know, he was tanned from the elbow down, the neck up, and the rest of his body was the whitest body you have ever seen. It never seen sunshine, ever. And I just, oh, and then you had to kiss him, and when you give him a kiss with no teeth, it just, it just caved in on you, you know, just. And, but it was worse with grandma when you'd give grandma a kiss goodnight and that Garrett snuff was still in there. And you, you just, you know, kiss your grandma, kiss your grandma. But I remember it was so cold in the wintertime down there in central Texas, get down to 25, 30 degrees. Now some of y'all right now are saying that ain't cold. It's a different kind of cold, Dennis. It's a different kind of cold, Doc. It's cold. That old farmhouse had no insulation. My grandpa's daddy built it. No insulation. My grandpa was born in the corner of that house, slept in the corner till he was 95. You know what I'm talking about, that kind of farm. Had a cistern out and back. We drank cistern water sometimes. It ain't gonna kill you. <laughs> I'd have other farmers that were more well to do. We just wash with it. We just wash with it. I went, well, we drank it. If the we were afraid the well would go dry, but man, I'd sleep in that bed, and they'd put these quilts on you, like three of them. And when you're about seven, eight years old, they lay those quilts on you. You could not move. All I could move was my head. And I was a bedwetter till I was in the sixth grade, and that's a tough scenario. And I remember when I'd go home three or four days later, my mama would say, "Did you wet the bed?" Did you wet grandma's bed? No, ma'am. You didn't wet the bed? No, ma'am. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I said, I wet the quilts. Because <laughs> I couldn't flip over. You know what I mean? Well, okay. Uh, some of y'all are going to get that later now, right before you go to bed. I got it. Uh, now, this one's going to get you. When I was about 10, I could get out from underneath those covers. Now, we didn't have a feather bed, but it was likened unto it. And some of you have been on feather bed. I've been on feather bed. To get out, to get out is an effort. Well, I'm I, able to get out. Well, but then I'd go and I'd watch grandma. I'd go in their bed, the bedroom, the guest bedroom where they were sleeping. We only, they only had two, two rooms for sleeping. And I went and I'd look at them and, you know, both, no teeth. They didn't have CPAP machines back then. They were just... <laughs> You know, I mean, it was really sort of fun to watch. <laughs> and, and so then I went to the kitchen because I was sort of ADD and we didn't know about that back then. I was looking around the kitchen and, and I, they kept their false teeth in a pickle jar. And, you know, had, and had, they had the powder on the teeth and the, still some of the powder still you could see on the teeth. And the teeth were just sort of like looking at each other. It's a beautiful picture of a one flesh relationship. You know, and, uh, and so I looked at it and our people, all of our people had false teeth. And so I grew up looking forward to false teeth. You look forward to having false teeth, that one day I won't have to worry about a cavity, I won't have to worry about a root canal. I'll have my false teeth and won't have to worry about that ever again, you know. And so I don't know why, but I reached down and I got grandma's uppers. I said, I'm gonna try one out. And I put it in there. And it got hung in there and I went. Well, then I, I reached and got her lower ones 
and put them in there. And I had them both. And I, I started gagging. And I got, I got scared. You know, I was 10 years old. And I got scared. I thought, and so I wouldn't go to Grandpa's side of the bed because he'd whoop me. So I went, to, I went to Grandma's side. And did I scare my Grandma? Oh, I, ha, 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 ha. And then she scared me when she said, what are you doing? Those are not those teeth. Don't you ever put somebody else in teeth in you and you understand that. And that was the first time I ever heard speaking in tongues. Uh, but you know what? I brushed my teeth ever since. And most of these are mine. I've got an implant here and I've got a bridge and, you know, crayons. I mean, when I go to see my dentist, you know what he starts singing? Crown him, crown him, crown him. So, anyhow, uh, but those were good days, weren't they? I miss my grandparents. Yeah, I'll tell you something about your grandparents. I got a book, well, I got a book back there where I talk about them and what have you. It's called Planting Shade Trees That You May Never Sit Under, but others will. They planted shade trees for me. Your grandparents and loved ones planted shade trees for you. Did we ever think we would get this old? You know, I mean, we, I remember way back, you know, hearing about, you know, someone's going to have their 50th high school reunion. Well, I'm having my 50th high school reunion this September. I mean, what, what's going on? And 69, well, some of y'all are looking at me right now going, well, wait till you're 79. And someone else might be going, wait till you're 89. And then there might be someone here or here's someone here tonight that's going, <laughs> you know. <laughs> We're all on a journey, and that's okay. And, uh, you know, when I look in the mirror at the hotel, you know, the first thing I think about is, thank God for clothes, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know about y'all, but that's one of my first, I just praise the Lord for clothes. But, uh, you know, now my face and my eyes and, you know, they want, we were talking about it at the table. And, you know, I, gotta get, I need to get my eyes done. And my wife wants me to get them clip clip because I got all this skin, you know, on my eyes. And, and, and I'm afraid if I get my eyes clipped that, you know, I just won't look right. And if Jeff has me come back in the future, I'll be going, hey, what's going on? <laughs> and there'll be some old boy in the back going, is that Kenny Rogers? You know, uh, that was tacky, that was tacky, Kenny's dead, but anyhow. Um, and my skin, you know, I wore a long sleeve today because I didn't want you to, to see all my hickeys on my arm, you know. My, my skin is thin and I, I, I bump it easy and there's, I don't even know how I got it. You know, when we were teenagers, you sort of look forward to a hickey. <laughs> now, Pastor, you look at these old people here. They were all young ones and all wanted a hickey. Well, now, I'm getting hickeys. I don't even know where I got them. You know, I just, there it is. So I'll wear a long sleeve so you won't see it. I got a bad one right there. Just, it just, I don't even know how it happened, but I got it, you know, so I covered it up. And, uh, but, you know, and when I go to the truck stop to wash my hands and then I put my hands underneath the blower, my skin <laughs> looks like Gulf Shores, Alabama. <laughs> like the tide going out and the tide coming in. You know what I'm talking about, Dennis? And we get those little spots on our hands. I see, you got to, we get little spots on our hands and stuff. You know, it just, just happens. And yet I'm trying to put my shirt back in. I'm trying to be with it. I got this, you know, wear this shirt. And Laurie's got me these blue jeans. They're, they're skinny jeans. They're tight. Good night. You know, I said, honey, I'm 69 years old in September. She said, honey, you know, if you want to be, you know, be in the, you know, with, you know, Jeff's a younger guy, a young pastor, you know, got to wear these pants. Well, they just tight. <laughs> you, know what the, you know what it feels like? It feels like those compression hose we put on in the hospital, you know, so that we won't get a blood clot. I mean, right now, my thighs are, hmm. My calves are, I mean, there's no way that I'm going to have a blood clot because, I mean, my, my bottom part of my body right there, you know, every little movement. Uh, that's probably too much information, but anyhow. But 
the neat thing about, we think about those that have gone before us, Revelation 14, 13 said, blessed are they that die in the Lord, their works follow after them. Your grandparents' works are still following them in and through your life. If you've got grandkids, you, you probably grandparent a little bit like grandma and grandpa did. Oh, he's a good boy. Thank God for my grandma. My mother would say, he is pitiful. And grandma said, he's a good boy. I love my grandma. Grandpa would let me drive, put me out in the pasture in that 49 Ford. You know, I was 12 years old. Go at it. I barely, I'm trying to reach the clutch. I mean, we're, we're jerking, going all the way around that pasture. No grandpa, he's just holding on with his overhauls. That's probably one time he needed some elastic. Uh, but you remember that stick shift on the floor, big? You know, it was so loose, you're trying to find a gear. And, uh, you know, they're, here I am talking about them today. And they gave me a faith, too. They told me about Jesus. I was hard headed. I didn't come to Jesus till I was 17, March 15th, 1971, during the Jesus movement. But I gave Jesus my life then on a Monday night. I'm so glad I did. But it, I, I knew what to do because my grandparents had been patient with me and prayed for me. Man, they just think. You know, some of you prayed for your grandkids and they came to Jesus when they were six years old or seven years old or 10 years old or 12 years old. They had to wait 17 years for me to make that decision. But you know what? There's still some grandparents that are waiting on their 30-year-old or their 40-year-old or their 50-year-old to come to Jesus, you know? And that's okay. The Holy Spirit can handle all that for you and me. We need to be reminded what Bill Bright said, the old campus crusade guy. Remember him, Four Spiritual Laws? Witness in the power of the Holy Spirit and leave the results to God. And uh, you and I can live our life spirit-filled for our family, our loved ones, for our kids and grandkids and leave the results to God. Isn't that a good place to leave them? But it's easier said than done, isn't it? Read my book, No More Secrets. It's hard to let go, isn't it? Uh, we just, we're human. We can't help it. Uh, oh, I got another good book out there. Man, I did, got this done during the COVID because my wife made me. You know, get up to your office and work. 52 devotionals for men. It's called Breakfast, Bible, and Bull. Every man, every man needs a good breakfast, good Bible study, and shoot the bull with his buddies. It's really a good book. I tell men, you put this book on the toilet tank and you can have one chapter read every week. <laughs> My little mama, you know what she says about this book? There it is. You know what she says about it? She says, I don't like that word bull on the cover. I said, mama, it's for men. I don't like it. I said, well, I ain't changing that. I said, what do you think about the book? I've read it. I love it. You love the book? I love it. But I don't like that word bull. <laughs> but isn't she a good mom? Hey, moms, don't ever quit being a mom. You know, say what you, say what you say, mean what you say, in the power of the Holy Spirit, you be mom. There's a lot of people that can be a best friend or an aunt, but there's only one mom. And dad, same with you. There's a lot of guys that can be like an uncle or a brother, but there's only one dad. You be a dad, you know. Now temper your words with love and restraint, and that's, that's hard to do. My oldest son told me the other day, he said, Dad, he said, I'm going to tell you, you talk too much. He said, you, know, you don't listen. And you know what I did? I just kept my mouth shut. Just didn't say anything. I wanted to say something. But 
I didn't say anything. You know, it's good for me not to say anything. And you know what? There's, a, there's always a spoonful of truth in any, anything. And I do talk too much. Look at me. Here I'm talking right now. What time is it? See, it's five till two. Some of y'all go, we've been here all day. Need to go home and rest. If we're coming back tonight, we need a nap. <laughs> and a good bathroom. Uh, so I understand that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish, finish up just with, you know, from the, from the word of God. And I'll just hold it right here because it's pretty short. Don't let anybody rob you of your joy. At our age, we, we, can't, we can't do that. They need to see that the joy of the Lord is our strength. They need to see that that joy works when you get old or older. They need to see it. Because one day, if the Lord tarries, they'll be where we are. And they need to have an example before them to keep pressing on and living for the Lord and to be joyful and to be positive. The Bible says there's a time for tears and there's a time for laughter. Thanks for letting me be funny this morning, this after lunch. Uh, we cry plenty, don't we? Now, some of you may have a hard time crying. I have a hard time crying. But there's tears that go, go back behind and that are hidden. I wish I could cry the other way, but I have those tears, and you do too. But I can't let that rob me of the joy of the Lord and serving others. We got to go on. We got to press on. We got to live our lives. And you and your sugar babe need to go to Cracker Barrel and get that chocolate Coca-Cola cake with ice cream. And if you die early, well, big woo. <laughs> Hopefully you've picked out a nice casket that if you hadn't paid for it, they'll have to pay for it. <laughs> then they'll wish you would have been alive. But, but hold on to that joy. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. And if your bones dry up, then you can't walk or run. And then, then you got to take Beneva, ladies. Beneva for bone density. Osteoporosis, man. Beneva. Sally Fields takes Beneva for her bone density. You know what I do for my bone density? Bluebell ice cream. Now here's the good news about this, these books here. You, you, these books are $10 each or you can get three for 20. That's my stimulus package. <laughs> and so I got that from a politician, you know. And by the way, I, I hadn't done many voices for you, but here's my Ronald Reagan. Uh, well, yes, today is a day to vote. Many of you have, God bless you. May I just say this, Nancy was a great president. Whatever she said do, I did. And, uh, you know, they made a big to-do about my age when I ran for president. Some of you recall that. I always brought up my age. I remember having coffee with Abraham Lincoln one time. <laughs> and he said it bothered him too. I did a Republican, so now I got to do a Democrat. So here's my Bill Clinton. Hey, let me just say this right now. If I had met Sarah Palin in college, I'd be a Republican today. <laughs> Can I say that? I finally got him laughing, old Dennis down here. And oh, I, I haven't really done my Billy Graham. I love to do Billy Graham. I've done stuff for him over the years. And I remember when he was younger and I was much younger, even out there at grandma and grandpa's, I'd watch him preach on television all over the world. And his voice was strong. He was younger. And then I'd do stuff for Dr. Graham when he got older, and his voice would be weaker and not exactly the same. But he was still Billy Graham, 
and a great man of God. Oh, I love the Grahams. And, uh, you know, I've always loved those voices. Don Knotts, Barney Fife. Oh, has anybody seen Thelma Lou? Oh, she's the cutest little thing you've ever seen. This body is a lethal weapon. And uh, remember old Ernest T. Bass. Ernest T. Bass, how do you do, Miss Wiley? Charlene, Charlene, I love you, Charlene. Okay, I just thought I might do one of your relatives real quick there. Uh, out here in the wide open spaces of Missouri and Kansas. Uh, but anyhow, oh, I've got D all that to say. I've got DVDs out there and CDs, so in case you want to hear more of a, a, you know, comedy and humor and impersonations, uh, the DVDs are 10 bucks, the CDs are 10 bucks, but you can get any three of them for 20, or you can get two books and a CD for 20. If you don't have a CD player, you can still purchase a CD because <laughs> they're a great coaster. And uh, you can put your coffee right on my face. <laughs> we'll pray about it. Uh, and so all that's out there. And uh, so today, everything's three for 20. I don't know what it'll be tonight. Uh, you know, I may hit them up for 10 bucks a piece or something. But my own kind, I like y'all to have a good deal. So three for 20. On the website, our website, everything's like $15. The books are $15. Listen, I wouldn't pay 15 either. Uh, you know, 10 maybe, but three for 20. But anyhow, they're out there to take home and they're good books. Uh, this No More Secrets is really good. If you buy it, at the very end, my oldest son who's 40, he wrote the epilogue, and uh, it's just like four pages. If you read it, you'll read the whole book. So he's, he's, uh, he's had issues in life. My youngest son, Dusty, too, and he's in the book. When my mother read the book, I said, Mom, what do you think about it? She said, I can't believe you told everything. <laughs> I said, well, so did you like it? I'm reading it a second time. I said, well, why are you reading it a second time? Because there's a lot of stuff I didn't know. This book here, Planting Shade Trees That You May Never Sit Under, it's a good book about leaving a legacy. And uh, my story's in there. It's, just, it's a good, it's, it's good book, good reading. You'll, it'll remind you of those that have planted shade trees for you. And it'll encourage you to plant shade trees for those coming after us. You know, Steve Green, what was the old song he would sing? May those who come after us, uh, follow after us, find us faithful. And I pray that they will. And uh, so, anyhow, it, it's, it's, it's a good book. So, anyhow, you can, if you want me to sign them, I'll sign them, because when I sign it, it makes me feel like I'm David Jeremiah. <laughs> uh, but it lowers the value of the book. <laughs> but it makes me feel like I'm David Jeremiah. But, uh, so anyhow, it's back there. And if you don't have time to buy something and you're coming back tonight, you can buy it tonight, you know, however you feel led. You don't have to buy anything. Uh, and, if, and if you don't need to buy anything, you just want to watch me a little bit, uh, you can get on my YouTube channel, just Dennis Swanberg on YouTube. And there's all kind of stuff on there. You, my old TV show, Swan's Place, and other stuff, there are little clips that you can watch. And when you get tired of me, just turn me off. Uh, easier to do than what you've done here today. I know what some of you men are thinking, we've been here a gum hour. Okay, all right. Brother Jeff, don't preach that long, or do you? Okay, yeah. Look, his wife's going, please, honey, no, no. Uh, well, it's been good, been fun. Thank you for having me. Brother Jeff, you want to say a word to him? He probably does. He's probably going, I'm going to have to preach a whole sermon series to cover everything he's done. We have a confessional booth in the back for forgiveness. Hey, uh, give it up for Dr. Swanberg, would you please? Very good, very funny. You know, when we started doing these Young at Heart Days, we talked about just the need for uh, events for our senior adults to encourage, and I, I hope and I pray that this was an encouragement to y'all today. He talked about the need for us to be moms and dads. Our church needs moms and dads who live with joy, who have encouragement, and can encourage other people to be the people that God wants us to be. 
and wants them to be. And so I hope that this will help you today to do that. Uh, just an FYI, uh, on October 3rd, we have another Young at Heart Day. Uh, same time, same schedule, things of that nature. Uh, and uh, some, uh, we have uh, speakers for that. And Dr. Cecil Siegel uh, is going to be preaching for us there. And the worship leader for First Baptist Kearney is going to be leading us in song that Tuesday. And uh, we might have somebody else here as well for that, but just right now, that's what we have. And so just an FYI, put it on your calendars. And uh, if you have any recommendations or uh, want to make some snide remarks, you know, I can listen to you. So uh, again, tonight at 7 o'clock, Dr. Swanberg will be back for another uh, comedic sketch and so I hope that you can be here for that it's five dollars to get in and if you're struggling with the five dollars just let me know and we'll figure that out okay not, don't worry about it but seven o'clock it's gonna start at seven I won't make you sit right here you can sit wherever you want to tonight okay thank you guys for being here make sure you go out and uh, just meet Dr. Swanberg if you haven't done so already all right let me pray for you and we'll be dismissed Father we give you thanks for the day we do thank you for this comedic relief we thank you for Dr. Swanberg and his ministry for how you use them, Lord, for the kingdom. And Father, we, we do need courage. We do need joy and laughter in our life. And so thank you for that. Thank you for the gifts that you've given to him. I pray, Lord, that it would encourage us to go from this place and to be the people that you want us to be. Lord, there are, there are people in our world that are hurting or struggling, uh, maybe who don't have joy. Help us to live with joy, with holiness, with character and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so much.